Look at this. Look at this. A million. A million in student loans. Over 100 people in the US owe over a million dollars in student loans. They have a million dollars plus in student loan debts. Five years ago, it was about 15. First off, as always, this video is officially, unofficially sponsored by Red Bull. Everybody knows when you drink more Red Bull, your income increases. You make more money when you drink more Red Bull. Oh yeah, crack, snapple pop. How rude of me. Here you go, you take the first sip. Bada boom, focused. So I'm sitting downtown at my favorite coffee shop this weekend and I come across this article in the Wall Street Journal. First off, let's just, let's just get out of the way. Yes, this is a newspaper. Yes, I still read the newspaper. Ha ha ha, my buddy calls me Gucci man, he calls me paper boy. I like reading the paper because I can get information without being interrupted from text messages, my Instagram, my Twitter, my Facebook, my YouTube, yada, 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 yada. Anyways, that's why I read the paper. So I'm reading through this article and it's titled, $1 million student loans. Should I be doing this? Well, yeah. This is, uh, this is in Draper, Utah. Mike Maru, a 37 year old orthodontist, he made a big investment in his education. As of Thursday, he owes $1,060,945.42 in student loans. They didn't even round it up for him. Article goes on to say Mr. Maru pays only about $1,600 a month. Only? The guy pays $1,600 a month in student loans, and that doesn't even cover his interest payments. Now remember, when you're borrowing money from someone, you've got the total payment that you're paying broken up to interest and principal, right? The principal amount is the amount you're borrowing, and the interest is, is what the borrower, or what the, I'm sorry, what the lender, the lender says, hey, I'm gonna charge you because I'm giving you money, okay? This guy, he's not even paying all of the interest. He's paying a portion of the interest, and he's not even paying down the principal. So his debt from seven years at University of Southern California grows $130 a day. In two decades, his loan balance will be $2 million. Now, the only saving grace for this guy is that after 25 years, in his case, in two more decades, 20 more years, his $2 million loan balance, it's forgiven. It's gone. It's done and over with after 25 years. But guess what? Who's got to pay for that? The taxpayers, right? We pay for these loans because they're federal loans. The problem with this is the article goes on to say that because it's being forbeared, because it's being forgiven, whatever the amount's being forgiven, that's considered a benefit in the eyes of the IRS. So that's a taxable gain. So this article goes on and estimates that the, uh, the taxable amount would be around $700,000. So this guy's gotta come up with 700K in 20 years. If he wants the two million to be forgiven, he's gotta come up with 700K. That's kinda like we saw with the, uh, with the housing crisis. People were getting all these loan uh, mortgage modifications. The principal was being reduced to the market value, but the difference the IRS said was a financial gain, it was a benefit. So the homeowner would have to pay taxes on that. After reading this article, I was absolutely shocked. I was like, what, what the hell was this guy thinking? Um, over a million bucks? I had to put something together. I started to think about what was this, what was this guy, what, what's going through his mind? He must be absolutely overwhelmed with, uh, with this debt that he's never gonna get out of until 25 years. But then I got to thinking, well, the article says the guy's doing well, he's making a buck 80, 200 a year. He's got five different dental offices. You know, he goes on vacations, he's, he's living the life. And in 25 years, well, 20 years now, the, the debt's gonna be wiped out clean. So the way I see it, the guy's played the system and he played it well. One of the first things that I thought of was a story when I was in college down here in Southeast Florida. The first thing that came to mind was I remember I was talking to one of my friends at work and I was telling her, it, it was probably be my last semester, my second to last semester, and I was telling her, listen, I have a chance to take out some more student loans. Right now, I'll have about $7,000 in student loans when I graduate, which is nothing. I mean, I, I ended up getting some scholarships, I paid cash for some classes. So leaving with a four year degree and having 7K in debt, that's amazing. I, I'll, I'll take that anytime, I'm sure most of you would too. So I, I had the choice between $7,000 in debt. And then I told her, but I could take out some extra loans. You know, I don't want to work as much. My last semester, I want to have a little more fun. But if I go this route and I take out more loans, I'll finish college with $23,000 in debt. 
again, both really not that bad. I think the average student now with a bachelor's degree, I think it's around $30,000 a year. The whole point is it's, I, I chose between 7K or over three times the amount, $23,000. Obviously, $23,000. And I remember she looked at me and said, oh my God, you're crazy. Don't take out any more loans. Graduate with 7K. Why, why would you end up you know, getting more loans? And, and I was short-sighted. The whole point is, my advice looking back now, it's, it's not too much of a burdensome because I'm able to pay them off. But my whole point is, is that just use your student loans to pay for books and tuition and that's it. I was taking so many extra loans and financial aid out just to pay for short-term living expenses so I didn't have to worry about working, right? I didn't want about working, but really I, I was going out, I was partying with the money. At the end of the day, I, I you know, 7K, or 23K, it's a big difference. Three times, I ended up taking three times the amount of loans out just because I needed extra money for short-term living expenses. So my first recommendation would be, don't do that, just use your student loans for books and tuition and that's it. Second thing, now when you graduate, you're gonna have the opportunity to consolidate your student loans. You probably didn't realize it, but you have like three, four, five different lenders. When I graduated, I had five different lenders I had no idea about, I was just taking loans out. I had five different lenders. They all have different interest rates, different due dates, it's a mess. Consolidating means basically someone steps in, they pay off, I say someone, a company, the company pays off all your student loans, this lender, this outside lender pays off all your student loans to those five lenders and now you just owe this one, this one company, this one lender with one interest rate, with one due date, right, with one, uh, one term payment, everything, the, the term payment, the term with one term, one end date for the term. So consolidate. It's a, it's a great thing. A lot of times you'll get a lower interest rate, it'll lower your payment. And then what I was able to do is I was able to do step payments. So every two years, my payments increase. So when I first graduated college, I think my, my payment was probably like 80 bucks a month. So it was $80 a month for the first 24 months, two years. And then the third year, it went up to like 96 bucks a month. It'd be 96 bucks a month for 24 months, two years, and then goes up to like $120 a month, two years later. The whole idea, the whole concept is hopefully as you progress in your career, you're going to be making more money. So, you know, it, it's kind of in line, your, your expenses are in line with the income that you're bringing in. So not only when you consolidate, you have less lenders that you have to deal with, you usually have a lower payment. And, and then in my case, there was like eight different things I could choose from. They could take a percentage of your income. You could do the step, you could do fixed payment, whatever you want, but consolidate your student loans. The third thing that I got out of reading this Wall Street Journal article was that your student loan debt should equal the major that you got in the income that that major is hopefully going to produce when you're done. Perfect example. I can't tell you how many friends I have that got a bachelor's in business management, which is great. I'm glad they went to school. They learned, they were thinking ahead, having more opportunity, hopefully. They got a bachelor's in business management and they've got over 80,000, over $100,000 in student loans. First off, we all know what bachelor's in business management is the classic business degree that says, I really don't know what I wanna do, but I at least wanna to go to college and do something. The problem with that is, <sighs> seriously, $100,000 for a bachelor's in business management? I'm not talking about going to dental school or being a doctor, okay? The whole point is match up your major with the income that you expect to make. If you're gonna have $100,000 in student loans when you get out, you damn well better know exactly what you're doing when you get out and exactly how much you're making so you could do the math and see if it makes sense, okay? You don't wanna have, there's no reason you're gonna go and get $100,000 in student loans and go get a job that has a ceiling of $40,000 a year. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with making 40K a year, I'm just saying 
you don't need to go get a hundred thousand dollars in student loans to make 40k a year that's my point so match up your student loan debt with, with your major and with your career and those are those are the three things that i really got out of this article thanks for watching the money beast show if you're new to this channel please hit that subscribe button smash it if that's what you're into keep watching the videos i appreciate the support at the money beast show on this channel i talk about personal finances real estate and entrepreneurship thanks Thanks for watching The Money Bistro, where I talk about personal finances and wealth building. Hit that subscribe button and click on the next video now.